Sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! It's not gonna happen if Daniel McMillan, Pennsylvania native, kept your winning here at Pocono. Third win of the season, you'll win the championship. Ryan Benjamin with the last lap pass! And he is going to score the victory in the Minute Maid 300. Sam and Oskin, third win of the season! Pete's gonna get it and open these three laps tonight! Welcome to the NOF SRL. Two races remain, and both of them take place in the same state. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the penultimate race of the inaugural season of the NOFSRL Mission of Barbecue Cup Series. We are live from Trenton, New Jersey, getting ready to kick off race number 35, 34, I should say, of the inaugural season of the NOFSRL Mission of Barbecue Cup Series, the Star Ledger Patriot Day 500. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Trey Wright. Joining me alongside me is a driver and the... The driver of the number 52 body armor Mitsubishi, Matt Tuck. And Matt, uh, definitely been an absolutely wild chase so far with Jonathan Logan and Derek Hamill in an absolute dogfight for the championship. They both start inside the top 10. So definitely at this uh, oblong-shaped five-turn New Jersey Motor Speed, uh, not New Jersey Motor Speedway, that's where our next race is. Trenton Motor Speedway, what are your expectations here in the penultimate race this season? Well, it'll be pretty interesting here. Obviously, this is a pretty unique racetrack, um, but it's going to be, you know, big thing obviously going on is the battle between the top two in points, you know, seeing how that closes in here this weekend. That's going to be, that is what we are watching here for today. Obviously, see Jonathan Logan starting up front. Derek Hamill's not starting up front. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out throughout the course of this race. Hate to burst your bubble there, but Derek Hamill is in that 91 car in the outside row of outside lane of row three so he is uh, both of them starting inside the top 10 and uh the way that the points are running is you take a look and see your chase grid uh on the right hand side of your screen after eight races after that absolutely insane nazareth race uh earlier this week jonathan logan and Derek hamill are, have been kind of running away from the other 12 chase drivers or the other 10 chase drivers, or now I should say the other 9 chase drivers, I'll explain why there's only uh, 11 chase drivers in a second, but Eric Monaco is uh, more than 100 points back, Colton Yo, Madison Tall, around out of the top 5, Landon Smith Jr., this guy simply cannot catch a break in the last 5 races, he has finished outside the top 25 after winning at Zenjoltis, Greenville Spartanburg, Blue Camshaft on lap 4, finished last. Uh, trying to think here, Darlington just had a poor qualifying effort, and especially at a track like Darlington, you need a good qualifying run if you want to run well. Finished uh, outside the top 30 in that race, I believe. Uh, Pocono, something amiss with uh, about 10 laps to go on the 88 car. Had to come down the pit lane, finished four laps down in last place. Uh, Langhorn was caught a lap down as a... Uh, under the uh, pit cycle, under caution, kind of screwed him out of a good win, finished 37th in that race. And then obviously, uh, last uh, pa this past Tuesday at Nazareth, looked like he was finally going to get a solid win in the top five with uh, on a restart with uh, 10 laps to go, was turned by the points leader, Jonathan Logan, into the inside wall, triggering a massive wreck, which injured the driver of the number 34, Al Agassi, another chase driver. And uh, now I'm getting into the explanation why will they only have 11 chase drivers left. Al Agassi uh, is really in a... Uh, Excuse me, Al Agassi is not in the 34 for this race and will not be in the 34 for our next race at the New Jersey Motor Speedway. Uh, it broke his wrist in that back straightaway accident. Uh, Nazareth on Tuesday was not cleared to race, so developmental driver for American Motorsports, Dano Georgi from Santa Barbara, California, is in the 34 for this race and the next race at New Jersey Motor Speedway. Kind of sucks that Al Agassi, native of Flemington, New Jersey, uh, is not going to be able to partake in his two home racetracks in his home state. But uh, d hopefully that uh, young that uh, young guy from Santa Barbara can uh, kind of light up the track for that team. We'll just see uh, what they're gonna have to what they have to do to uh, get set. But uh, Keegan Thompson, Tyler Reynolds, Brady Wilmington, and Benjamin Dover and Logan Williams, the other Chase drivers in the field, uh, definitely gonna be 
though they are the, uh, kind of the long shots to win this at this point. All 11 cha remaining chase drivers have a mathematical shot to win this, but Benjamin Dover, in order, in order for uh, him to win, he needs to lead every single lap in the next two races and have Jonathan Logan and Derek Hamill finish last. Uh... And uh, second to last, I should say. So the odds of that happening are pretty uh, astronomically low. So Benjamin Dover, he has he's going to need to pray and pray if he wants a chance to possibly come home with the championship. I should probably uh, give out run out the top five, uh, top five rows, top ten starting uh, rows, top ten starting positions. I should say Nathan Buchanan, first poll of the year. Uh, in that number 12 for Josh Williamson Incorporated starting alongside him is a number 94 of Tyler Reynolds, Chase Driver. Chase Drivers make up row 2, number 10 of Jonathan Logan and the 62 of Brady Wilmington. Row 3, Daisy Johnson, one of your drivers, Matt Tuck, starts alongside the 91 of Derek Hamill. Row 4, it is Daniel Voiles and Nathan Smith. And then row 5, number 1 of Colton Yo and the number 97 of Brandon Yadell. And then another uh, kind of dark uh, white elephant in the room. Obviously, this race is premiering on September 11th, um, the 19th anniversary of the September 11th terrorist attack. So, on laps 9, 10, and 11, they will all three of them will be silent to remember all th almost 3,000 innocent Americans that were uh, on that were uh, murdered that day, that fateful day, September 11th, 2001, and we uh, remember all of those uh, victims of the September 11th terrorist attacks. Gonna get the cars rolling off here in uh, just a quick moment. And the Papyrus Sierra Pontiac Pace Car pulls off onto the racing surface, making sure everybody rolls off nice and safely, and they are. Going to be doing 54 laps of action around this five-turn uh, oblong-shaped racetrack, and you're probably thinking, oh, five turns, probably the same boring format as Nazareth. We're actually uh, turning right once uh, every 54 laps here, and you'll see that in just a quick second. There is the right-hand turn on the back straightaway. Matt Tuck, who's your pick to win the Star Ledger Patriot Day 500, the penultimate race of the inaugural season of the NOFSRL Mission Barbecue Cup Series? Well, all things being equal here, I think Jonathan Logan's going to come up in the clutch here today, score a win, and give himself that point buffer heading into... Uh, the finale race next weekend. Yes, uh, Saturday night will be the Corporate Deployments 500 from uh, just over in New Brunswick, but Jonathan Logan definitely Mr. Clutch as of late. As they uh, roll through turns uh, 4 and 5, uh, officially registered as turns uh, 3 and 4. And look at this awesome shot we're going to get here. Papyrus Pace Car pulling off onto pit lane. Uh, Nathan Buchanan and Tyler Reynolds. The green flag is out. We're racing here at Trenton. Nathan Buchanan rocketing out to a nice lead over Tyler Reynolds and Jonathan Logan. Three wide behind those guys with uh, Daisy Johnson, Brady Wilmington, and Daniel Voiles. Daniel Voiles has really been uh, coming uh, alive and being more consistent uh, in this chase as they go on to the back straightaway through that uh, little kink in the back straightaway for the second time, Matt Tuck. You see a lot of guys spacing out here. A lot of guys spacing out here. You see Voiles, Jonathan Logan, a lot of guys making moves. That's getting dicey there in the back of the pack. Hamill's losing a lot of spots here early in this race. That's not something you want to do because Jonathan Logan the past couple weeks here has definitely shown he's he's got a strong car. He's come alive late in this season, but this is not the time of the year. This is not the place where you want to be losing a bunch of points early. It definitely is not. Jonathan Logan currently running third. Derek Hamill last time by 13th. That is not what Hamill wants. He's only got a... And Jonathan Logan, he's got a 74-point cushion over Derek Hamill. And right now, I'm not... I don't believe that Logan would clinch, but he would uh, very, be uh, very, very close to doing so. Eric Monica running uh, third in the points. 
currently way in the back of the field right now. There he is. He's got a little bit of a, he's got damage on both sides of his car. That's really going to hinder his aerodynamics uh, late in the going, currently running in the 31st position last time by. So uh, going into New Jersey on Saturday night, uh, he's going to really have to work if he wants any chance to win this championship. But like you were saying, Derek Hamill, he's uh, now back to the inside. So he's going to try and gain some positions for on guys that were stuck up on the outside. But he lost a lot of spots there. And Jonathan Logan still in third. Colton Yo looking to possibly come in and make uh, be a dark horse for this championship has up to second. He's currently running fourth in the championship standings. So he could possibly uh, come away looking for his second win of the season. He won earlier this season at Dover. And he's looking to possibly, like I said, be a dark horse in this championship battle. But Nathan Buchanan has led all five laps so far, coming around to complete lap number five. Here in the uh, early stages of the corporate, not the corporate deployments. That is the next race in New Jersey. Star Ledger Patriot Day 500. We are closing in on the solemn three laps uh, that we will hold, uh, unfortunately, for all those that died uh, 19 years ago today. Definitely here, but taking a look back up front here for the moment. That one car, Colton Yo, has got a lot of speed here early in the going. Obviously, the 12th Buchanan jumped out to a quick lead, but you can see that one car. He's looking strong, and I think he's going to be first lead change of the day coming up here. Colton Yo in the Cineva Chevrolet is going to take the lead here at Trenton. He got the run on the inside. That's going to put Buchanan back to second. Logan and Dover run third and fourth. Daisy Johnson rounds out the top five. Hey, you're running up here in six, so you're having a pretty good day yourself. Nathan Smith, uh, Owen Miles, and Brennan Yadell round out your top ten back at the line. But the top two have kind of pulled away. Dover really wide through turns three and four. That's going to set him back outside the top five as you come up on that 56. Going to side draft him here on the front straightaway. And uh, Benjamin Dover falling back a couple of positions. But car number one in position number one here on lap eight of 54 in the early stages of the Star Ledger Patriot Day 500. It's looking fast. The cannon wants that lead back in that 12 car, but... Interesting race so far. A lot of guys been able to. A lot of guys have lost some spots, but a lot of guys are definitely able to make up positions too. Yeah, and as they round turns three and four, beginning on uh, this lap and uh, concluding on lap eleven, we'll have three laps of silence for all of those that were killed 19 years ago today. Uh, thoughtfully remember all of those that were tra lives were tragically cut showing the caution has come out Landon Smith jr. something uh, wrong in the back of the pack with him and we did see coming off of uh, for turn 10 Madison tall Carter Joey and a lot of those guys getting squirrely off of turn four 
But the caution out and Landon Smith Jr. Once again, something. This, this entire team season has just been, been falling apart. The wheels and pretty much everything has come off of this 88 team, unfortunately. First caution of the afternoon. Colton Yale leads them back to the line. And uh, unfortunately, that, that was kind of an action-packed uh, three laps of uh, remembrance there. So, uh, very, very interesting turn of events. Colton Yo is your leader. What did you see out there, Matt Tuck? I didn't catch exactly. It's kind of the 88 land and Smith, I believe, was running in the back of the pack as it is. So, we'll have to see the replay to see what happened. Definitely going to have to. And we will review what happened to Madison Tall and a lot of those guys... So Madison Tall, Carter, Joey, and a couple more of those guys uh, will lose it off of turn four. Now that you see these, any of these guys come down the pit lane, it appears that they aren't. Actually, no, they are. So everybody coming down except Madison Tall, who had to come down. Um, I think she was forced down, in fact. Colton Yo leads the field down now. We're gonna have to take a look and see if anyone tries and pulls tries to pull strategy early on here. I think if anybody takes two tires or four tires or just even go gas and go, we are about a third of the way through the fuel run. Gonna be focusing here on the Mopar team of Nathan Buchanan. Let's see if we can get a, a little bit of a better view there. Tyler Reynolds pulling in behind him. Looks like going to be a four-tire four tire stop for that Mopar team. I think he's going to try and get off of pit road first. No, Colton Yo is going to win the race off of pit lane. Looks like everybody pretty much in the same position as they came in. Tyler Reynolds a little late off the pit lane. And some contact there with Daniel Voiles. That's going to hurt Daniel Voiles just a little bit. But got a couple of different incidences to unbox here. Uh, Colton Yo won the race off of pit lane. We're going to take a look and see what happened with Madison Tall and a lot of those guys off of turn four. And then we'll get you uh, to your actual cause of the caution here. First caution of the afternoon at the Trenton Raceway for the Star Ledger Patriot Day 500. We'll be replaying this once. You're going to see Caleb Rose, your driver, Matt Tuck, up on the outside wall. Tristan Allen and Madison Tall. You can see Tristan Allen hard into the inside wall. And then Madison Tall, she's just flying down the pit lane. Has to just check up, check up, check up, and then she figured, well, might as well just make my pit stop now. And I don't believe that brought out the yellow flag. I believe something up here. We're gonna quickly review what happened with Landon Smith Jr. in uh, just a couple of seconds. So pretty much the exact same thing that happened to Caleb Rose. Landon Smith Jr. just too wide through turn four. Gonna hit the outside wall, and the only difference there, uh, Dave Benjamin Jr., your Langhorn winner, is going to come up into him, turn the car around, and he is going to go completely around on the front straightaway. That is going to work. A trigger the yellow flag, Eric, uh, no, not Eric Monaco. Logan Williams has a code brown there, and I think Dave Benjamin Jr. into his brother, and that's uh, what did, what happened to Ryan Benjamin while he was so out of shape. Dano Georgia in the 34 having a very close moment there with the 42 of Dave Benjamin Jr. But Landon Smith Jr., unfortunately, some, another incident happening to the driver of that 88 car. Just watch the 88 of Landon Smith Jr. He's just going to get up into the high side. Just not really a terrible move there, but what else are you going to do there? Trying to make up as much position as he can. These guys back here get really dicey little bit of damage there to the 42 and the 15 of Ryan Benjamin, but tough break for some of these guys. Obviously, it's early on in the race, and those are not the moves you want to be making, nor the result you want to have come off of them. Definitely. Now, we're going to go on board with a 79 of Logan Williams. He had quite the front row seat, uh, very, uh, near miss on that 88, and then we'll get you back to your restart here at the Trenton's Raceway. On board with Chase Driver, Logan Williams. He almost turned the 15 of Ryan Benjamin around, and then got it... Uh, Nice and uh, sent up there. And then uh, kept it clean. Race back to the yellow. You see the Benjamin brothers kind of touching each other up in the front. But uh, that's it pretty much. Nice job by uh, Logan Williams avoiding that 88. But Landon Smith Jr. once again going to be a bad result for the 88. Colton Yo led them off of the pit lane. He will be your leader on the restart here at the Trenton Speedway. So let's see what he can do on the restart here in the corp... Uh, not... 
I keep saying this. I don't know why I keep saying this. Uh, the Star Ledger F Patriot Day 500. Back here at the Trenton Fairgrounds, I should say. That is the official name of this track. Wrapping up our first caution of the afternoon. No one was knocked out, but Madison Tall is going to be on the tail end of the lead lap. So she's going to be in front of Colton Yeo and the rest of these guys as they run. Top 10, Colton Yeo, Nathan Buchanan, Jonathan Logan, your points leader, Daisy Johnson, Matt Tuck, Benjamin Dover, Owen Miles, Danny DeVito Jr., Nathan Smith, and Mitchell Collins. Your last winner here, in fact, in the NOFSR Mission Barbecue Cup Series. Won the uh, John Andretti 500% by Trains and Lanes. Last uh, race at Nazareth. Green flag back out in the air. Colton Yeo leads them back to the green flag. Get held up here just a little bit by Madison Tall. They're all running single file. Zachary Fitzwater, first time we're mentioning him today. It's going to be a first one to jump up, jump up to the high groove. Carter Joey falling back there in the 51 just a little bit. We apologize. He, Carter Joey was not involved in the uh, turn four incident with Madison Tall uh, and Tristan Allen and somebody else. Trying to think of that, uh, who that somebody else was. Looks like 77 of uh, Dustin Davis was involved in something. I think that might have been involved uh, with something with Eric Monaco. Or just uh, checked up on the uh, cooldown lap or under caution. Zachary Davis, a lot of damage on that 14 machine. Fairly clean racing throughout here. Jonathan Logan going to go to the inside. Nathan Buchanan, that is for second. And one of Colton Yeo is subsequently going to go to the inside of Madison Tall's fellow chase driver to try and put her one lap down. But Logan getting a huge run on Colton Yeo down the long front straightaway into turn one. He is right on that bumper of that one car. And obviously he's, I don't think, see, the 91 of Hamill's kind of slid out of the top 10. So if you're sitting there, if you're Jonathan Logan, you know... You jump out to that lead, you lead some laps for a while, maybe gain the most laps led bonus point. You know, you could, he could open himself up a little bit of a comfortable gap heading into next weekend at New Jersey. You know, if he can pull off this win here today, obviously a long way to go, no doubt about, about it. But so far, doing everything that he needs to, not making any mistakes. And that's what, you know, when you're in a championship fight like this, you don't necessarily have to do everything, but you have to make sure anything you do, you, you don't do it so you lose points, and that is not what you want to see from that 15 of Ryan Benjamin, and I'm going to wonder if that's going to bring out a yellow. He's stalled on the back straight with something amiss on the 15 machine. I'll have to see if this does bring out a yellow, and yes, it does. Caution is back out here for Ryan Benjamin. Something amiss on the 15 machine. Colton Yell will lead them back, and... That is uh, kind of what Derek Hamill wanted to see was currently running in the 20th position, not what he, not the run that he needs if he wants any uh, shot at winning this championship. And there's the reason. A lot of damage to the right side of that car, I think. A lot of drivers are overdrive, excuse me, overdriving turn four and uh, hitting that outside wall. But something amiss on the, your Daytona 500 champions car. We'll uh, have to see in what we'll see what it is uh, as the race is over. But now the question is: Do any of these guys come down the pit lane again and try and top off? Don't know if you would here or not. This is obviously you're only a couple laps into the run. Well, they are. Colton oh, Hill is going to lead mind. them back down. Once again, Madison Tall. Actually, no, she's probably going to come down next lap. But uh, seeing if anybody stays out here, nobody is going to stay out, which is surprising. Justin Davis with his hood damage. But everyone coming back down the pit lane. We'll have to see if, if Colton Yo leads them back down, uh, leads them back off the pit lane, I should say. A little bit of contact there, Brandon Yadell running into your car. Now you're probably not going to be happy about that. But four-tire stop for Colton Yo, looking for his second win of the season. One here at Dover, trying to get uh, full frontal motorsports. Their third win of the season, and he's going to get turned by Jonathan Logan off the pit lane. Oh, no. Ah, uh, you, you hate to see it for Colton Yo. 
Jonathan Logan has just been a terminator these last couple of races. I can't believe that just happened. That's that's a tough call there. I don't exactly know. Eesh, I don't know exactly what the plan there was. That 10 car, I don't know if he just felt that one was in his way or something, but that's uh, that's a tough one there. Well, he's going to go. I think he Colton Yo officially led the race back, uh, led the uh, won the race off of pit lane, so I know officer officials are telling him go to the lead, but look at all the damage on that one car. I don't see a whole lot of damage on Jonathan Logan, but a uh, crazy, crazy incident as Madison Tobel go get her service and uh, Ryan Benjamin stalled on the back straight away probably another fuel leak or probably just lost power in the 15 but he's back out on the racetrack currently running uh, 15, two laps down Caleb Rowe, Caleb Campbell I should say something I miss on the 46 I'll see, have to see what he does, what happens to him but we pretty much saw what happened to Ryan Benjamin stalling on the back straight away but I, I just can't believe uh, what I just saw. So instead of reviewing what happened to Ryan Benjamin, we're going to see what happened to Dustin Davis to give him his damage early in the race. I know kind of a weird incident reviewing an incident that happened probably in the early stages of this race, early probably the first couple of laps. But we're going to review what happened to Dustin Davis in the 77. And probably we're going to review this uh, incident on pit road, and then we'll get you back to your restart here at the Trenton Fairground Speedway. For the running of the Star Ledger Patriot Day 500. So here's what happened to Dustin Davis uh, coming out of pit road right in front of his teammate. And then subsequently, as he's packed in the rear, he packs uh, 22 of Josh Williamson in the rear. That was on the first set of uh, under caution pit stops after the Landon Smith Jr. spin. So he would have to uh, come down the pit lane once again and then service that car. So pit lane really been calamity alley, unfortunately. We're going to... Review what happened to the 10 of Jonathan Logan and the 1 of Colton Yeo. That's really going to change the outcome of this race. So I'll let you review uh, the uh, Colton Yeo and uh, Jonathan Logan incident. Right. Let's watch the one car here. Uh, he's about to come out of pit road. Ten car, Jonathan Logan. I guess you could say, don't really know who to blame for that. Obviously, I mean, what's Jonathan Logan supposed to do? Sit there. That 53 car, right side of that 53 car is all torn up. I did not notice that till now, but I don't know. That's a tough call there for the 10 between the 10 and the 1. I get why that happened. That's Colton Yodo kind of in the wrong place, though not re too, just too too close mm -hmm. to hugging the line of where all the cars were pitting. Yeah, kind of similar to the Alexander Rossi and Takuma Sato incident in the Indianapolis 500. Just a driver coming out wrong place, wrong time, and fortunately there are no penalties for uh, making contact on the pit road because the penalty is you're going to have uh, aerodynamic disadvantage. But Colton Yeo is still going to be your race leader here when we get back to the restart. After Ryan Benjamin stalls on the back straightaway, brings out a pivotal caution. Let's see what these guys can do on the restart here at the Trenton Fairgrounds Speedway for the running of the Star Ledger Patriot Day 500. Back here at Trenton, wrapping up our second caution of the afternoon. 
And it looks like the 46 of uh, Caleb Campbell, something amiss on the 46 machine. Tough break for him. It's just been an absolutely horrendous season uh, all in all for Caleb Campbell. And then obviously the two cars uh, lap down or uh, multiple laps down for Ryan Benjamin's case. Madison Tall and Ryan Benjamin, uh, both cars are uh, multiple laps down. Actually, Madison Tall is just a single lap down, so... She's going to try and get it back on Colton Yo. 37 cars left uh, on the lead. Lap 39 left in the race. Colton Yo with a lot of left side damage is your leader. Then it's Jonathan Logan, Daisy Johnson, Owen Miles, Dane DeVito Jr., uh, Cole Sampson, Matt Tuck, Benjamin Dover, Nathan Smith, and Nathan Buchanan rounding out your top 10 on the restart. Colton Yo is going to get around both of those lap down cars, and he is going to have a huge run going down the back straight away. Colton Yo, I mean, <laughs> just gets punched on pit road, but that one car is strong here today. You can see him just darting out to that lead. Now, it's going to be interesting to see on a long run how that left side damage holds up on that car. So far, so good. We will find out how that damage holds up there, but back to the field. I mean, Jonathan Logan just sitting up there in second. Now, he's got to be careful here because the high side around here can be very dangerous if you hit it. Oh, car high, oh that's a wreck, and they Derek Hamill is involved. Derek Hamill, a little bit more damage from Nathan Stapleton. Tristan Allen, Landon Smith Jr. again. I thought I saw the caution lights and I uh, flicked up. There's Eric Monaco. That might be his championship hopes down the drain. Carter Joey involved. Tristan Allen again. Caleb Rose again for the, X, for the billionth time this season. 54 car involved in an on-track incident. Riley Sampson with a little bit of hood damage. Something massive happened on the front straightaway. Once again, bringing out our third caution already here. So we are at the cross flags point in the race already. Man, oh man, what a wild race this has been so far. Colton Yo led them back again. Daisy Johnson overtaking uh, the 10 of Jonathan Logan. Just man, oh man, what a wild race has been so far. Barely over halfway through, too. It's going to be interesting to see how this uh, plays out through the rest of the race. But the one car seems to be holding his own, given the damage on his side. Now, this is going to be some interesting strategy call here by the 53. I don't agree with that, but we'll have to see if throughout the remainder of the race... This yeah. could be an interesting strategy call. I don't know. Like, I don't know what the full fuel window is here if they make a full run, so I'm not entirely sure. I'm actually... I am liking this call because the fuel window is uh, just past the halfway point, and we are at the halfway point, so I think these... I think these guys... The guys that are staying out on track can make it, but it is going to be tight. I think uh, these guys, Daisy Johnson, Benjamin Dover, and a couple of these guys that uh, darted down onto the pit lane... Uh, I think they uh, just want to ensure that they can make it back, but I think the majority of guys are repairing damage. I think that's the case for Daisy Johnson, repairing some of that left-hand damage. There you are. So I think that was the primary reason, but they're going to fill those cars full of uh, Texaco fuel regardless. And I think if this race does stay green, then uh, they would uh, be able to come definitely run uh, the rest of the race without uh, pitting. Not sure about the cars that are staying out, but we do have an incident to review off of turns three and four again. Uh, large incident, large, larger than the first incident, let's just say, involving uh, Carter Joey, Nathan Stapleton, Tristan Allen, and Landon Smith Jr., a lot of guys involved. Let's take a look and see what happened and bring out uh, the third caution of the afternoon at the Trenton Fairground Speedway for the running of the uh, Star Ledger Patriot Day 500. So, three wide off the corner. Derek Hamill second in points. Uh, and Dustin Davis and ben Dave Benjamin Jr. And right behind them, Caleb Rose and Eric Monaco uh, running into each other. And then it's just the track is blocked from there on out. You see Carter, Joey, and Tristan Allen running those guys. There's where Riley Sampson gets his damage. Zachary Davis is just going to run Nathan Stapleton uh, around. 88 lands with junior evasive maneuvers in the 88. Pretty much the exact same thing that happened to Madison Tall. Just uh, nowhere to go. Safest place is the pit lane. Just darts down there and then 
That's going to take out Carter, Joey, and Tristan Allen, and then that's going to really hinder the 91's performance uh, going into New Jersey. I won't say that Tristan, uh, Tristan Allen, Jonathan Logan has clinched it yet, uh, but uh, I think if he wins and Derek Hamill wrecks out, I think he's going to be very well close to clinching this championship going into the final race of the season. So you watch that 91. E, that's going to be... That's... I guess on the bright side, that's not too bad damage on the 91 compared to all the guys. Poor Caleb Bros there has no luck. But that's going to be... That's going to hurt his chances of winning. Obviously hurt him on the championship side. But overall, he's kind of lucky to get away that. Did not get a whole lot of damage there. Definitely not. I guess the biggest loser from all that is Eric Monaco. He's probably going to fall behind Colton Yo in the point standing so I think if Colton Yo can somehow pull a rabbit out of his rear to win this race I think he might have a chance at winning this championship and I know I've said this about 15 times within the last five or so races in the championship if you told me that Colton Yo and Jonathan Logan keep in mind both of those guys were the wild card drivers going into the chase if you told me that both of those guys would have extremely solid shots to win the championship uh, probably halfway through this season before uh, right after the all-star break I would have said you were absolutely insane but that's what we've got Colton Yo uh, leads them back saw Daisy Johnson duck down onto pit lane lane to repair some damage in the 53 so that will give second place to Owen Miles let's see what these guys can do on the restart here at the Trenton Fairground Speedway for the Star Ledger Patriot Day 500 back here at the Trenton Fairgrounds. We were wrapping up our third caution of the afternoon. Take a look and see who was knocked out from that 46 of Caleb Campbell. Still going to be last, but Ryan Benjamin two laps down. Carter Joey is off the racetrack, uh, so he is going to be knocked out, finishing uh, 39th in that 51 car. And then Madison Tall still one lap down. And Eric Monaco, they're still going to try and uh, keep that car out on the racetrack, get some sort of points in the 75. But I think uh, he's gonna he's gonna have to really work if he wants to win this championship at New Jersey the New Jersey Motor Speedway Saturday night. Green flag back out on the air for the number one of Colton Yo. He's got he does have a teammate right behind him, Owen Miles, only driver for Full Frontal Motorsports not to win a race this season. Obviously, Dave Benjamin Jr. won at Langhorn a couple of races ago, so. Owen oh, Miles looking to win his first race of the season. Been a really dismal uh, last couple of races, or just a dismal season in general for the driver of that 40 car. He's uh, on the outside of these lap car drivers, lap down drivers, I should say. Number one of Colton Yo is gone in position one. That's the teammate behind him, though. This will be uh, interesting to see how this plays out. Obviously, a bunch of lap cars too here, so that'll be interesting to see how that holds up the field. Ten cars still just sitting there in fourth place, doing everything he has to do to hold on to his points. Slight contact there between the 15 and the 91 on 99 on the exit of turn two, and Cole Sampson, the only Sampson driver to win this season, your Talladega winner earlier in the year. They're currently sitting P2. He had an absolute bonsai move uh, on the outside. Uh, Nazareth to pick up about 30 or so positions. He's trying to be the best of the rest, but I think uh, James Edwards is probably going to lock up that title. He's currently a couple hundred points in front of all those guys. They are closing, they are closing in on 15 laps to go here from the Trenton Fairground Speedway and Cole Sampson has caught up to the one car lickety split I think the damage on Colton Yeo's number one machine is starting to come into play as he rounds turns three and four Sampson is going to get a huge run off of him on the long front straight away and he's going to go to his inside entering turn one Have to give that one car credit though held up front there a lot longer than he probably should have given how beat up that left side is still sticking with the five there but expect that five of Cole Sampson to get by pretty quickly here now they're still running really rampant there Jonathan Logan currently running in the fourth position check back and see where Derek Hamill is Hamill uh, there he is oh he's gonna be on the inside of Dave Benjamin jr. both those guys are gonna get a turn four uh, pretty nice and evenly, but currently 23rd for the driver of the 91, while Jonathan Logan is 4th. 
So right now, Jonathan Logan would have a huge point advantage over Derek Hamill heading into the final race of the season at the New Jersey Motor Speedway. But it's currently Cole Sampson leading the charge here uh, past the halfway point, closing in on uh, the final couple of laps. Uh, 20 to go here from Trenton for Cole Sampson. But we might have another set of pit stops. Jonathan Logan underneath the aid of Danny DeVito Jr. for the final podium position. Then it is Daniel Voyle's battle here for fifth between Tyler Reynolds and your pole setter of Nathan Buchanan. Owen Miles fell back just a little bit. Fitzy is up here in, just inside the top 10. And there you are currently in a battle for 11th with Brandon Goodell as they go through the back straightaway kink. All this though, top two guys, the five and the one, they're just checking out here, chilling up in the front, and the more of those guys in the back battle each other, you know, the more of these two guys' lead is going to grow, which will make it easier if in the event there's a pit stop cycle that has to take place, which I'm still not sure about, but we'll just see, laps are definitely winding down here today though. They are borderline on pit stops. Pit window is about 30 laps, so I believe they can make it, but I'm not entirely sure. now. So a driver like Daisy Johnson or Benjamin Dover or oh no Eric Monaco Well, we might just have another caution Eric Monaco. Oh My god, this guy has just been tossed and turned so much in this chase Obviously know what happened to him Greenville Spartanburg. He got the win at Darlington but uh just ran mid pack at Langhorn ran mid pack at uh Nazareth and uh, once again, something amiss on the 75 machine. He should make it to pit lane, so we're not going to have another caution, but tough break for the driver of that 75. Cole Sampson and Colton Yo right running right on him. And Monaco's going to make it to down the pit lane. Just an absolute tough break for the driver of the 75. Now, when was the last lap they pit on? I believe... Uh, the last lap that these guys pit on, I'm trying to think here, probably lap 20 or so. Uh, or 20 or, tw uh, yeah, probably lap 20. Because I was right before the caution exactly at halfway. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure if these guys can make it or not. Because the fuel window, uh, I think the limit these guys can go is probably about 30, 32 laps. So, and the week we got restarted um, about uh, lap 27. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. It's, it's going to be extremely borderline for these guys. We'll just have to wait and see. 15 laps to go in the Star Ledger Patriot Day 500 for Cole Sampson. Currently has a, uh, no, a uh, nice interval lead exactly over Colton Yo in the one car. And Daniel Voiles. All three of the all top all uh, the top three guys looking for their second wins of the season. Highest winless driver this season is Danny DeVito Jr. in the number eight for Buck Racing. Like I said, Buck Racing just trying to get a single just trying to get some sort of foothold in this series. All three drivers have been winless throughout the season. And uh, for the fourth, third position, Jonathan Logan to the inside of Voiles tried to side draft him there but could not quite get there. Through the King Voiles is gonna pull away just a little bit. But it's all Cole Sampson in the five car. Looking for his second win of the season, coming around to 13 laps ago, but the question of pit stop still lingers. Fitzy getting almost turned around. He almost got turned around on the exit of turn four. Turn four has just been Calamity Corner all day long. Absolutely insane racing here. Three wide in the back. Madison Tall gonna probably fall out of mathematical championship uh, obligate or championship eligibility here. Come the end of this race. And now Landon Smith Jr. is coming on to pit lane. And now this could be the start of a cycle for these guys. That could be interesting here in the late stages of this race. 12 to go here from Trenton. I don't know. What, what are you thinking, Matt Tuck? Do you, these guys have enough in the tank, or do you think they're going to have to make a late race pit stop? Well, I'm kind of wondering now. Let's see here. 
yeah, we'll see. Obviously, some of these guys definitely got to pit. I don't know what exactly is going on. My screen froze up here, but yeah, pit strategy is definitely going to come down into an end of this race here. Yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Watching Landon Smith Jr. come down the rate uh, onto the pit lane. Actually, I think he's repairing something, so I'm not sure if there's a pro an issue on the 88, but he's currently he's currently a lap down. 36th position. He's going to fall out of championship contention. And Keegan Thompson has also come down the pit lane. Let's see if this is a scheduled pit stop. And it appears not. So, issues for two chase drivers. Landsman Jr. is going to finally get out. I think both of those guys are repairing damage, but the two winningest drivers of on the season so far uh, both coming down the pit lane late. Ten laps to go here from Trenton for Cole Sampson in the five. Currently a uh, seven-tenths of a second lead over the one of Colton Yo as I go around the kink. With the question of uh, pit stops still lingers here. I'm just not sure. Keegan Thompson uh, coming back out of the pit lane. And if these guys Where's do it? pit... Where's so, the 53 car at? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Daisy Johnson in the 53, currently running in the 17th position. If these, if all these guys can't make it, she's in the catbird seat to possibly steal this one. But I, I just don't know. I just don't know. Under 10 laps to go. Exactly 10 laps to go. Actually, 9 to go. Coming around to 8 to go for Cole Sampson. I don't think the 88 of Lance Jr. is going to be an issue. See some uh, smoke in the back. Some guy uh, probably losing it off of... Excuse me. Turn four. Uh, for the uh, billionth time today. But uh, closing in on the end of this race. Brady Wilmington with some damage in the 62. Just... Uh, have to wait and see what the deal is for everyone. Cole, uh, Caleb, Caleb, Cole Sampson, I should say, has uh, opened the lead over Colton Yo to over a second now. Just have to wait and see how everything shakes up. And the caution is out. Yellow is out. Somebody's gone around. Is Matt Tuck, Jonathan Logan, we, and Daisy Johnson, Brandy Adele upside down. It's the big one here. Caleb Rose flying on the pit lane. Madison Tall, that's her championship. Yadel still upside down. Gotta get hit by Benjamin Dover. Flipping wildly 36 times. Matt Tuck destroyed once again. All three Velocistar racing cars mutilated. And that was huge. Oh my goodness. Brennan Yadell. And that's not what Kayla, uh, Cole Sampson wanted to see. Oh my goodness. James Edwards also involved. I think Dave Benjamin Jr. was a close call. You saw Jonathan, uh, Josh Williamson spinning around Daisy Johnson. Juan Rodriguez, my god. Absolutely speechless here. Dano Georgi with some damage in his first start. My good my my absolute goodness here. That was scary. Okay, we're going. The seven car went for one unbelievable ride there. Yeah. That was abs that, that I don't. Yeah, that was that was insane, and that that's gonna take out. That's gonna just throw whatever I said completely out the window. But now none of these guys are coming down the pit lane, so it looks like everybody should be good to go on fuel. But my oh my, we're gonna have a couple of different replays of this. Brandon Yadell going for the ride of his life. Oh my goodness, Cole Sampson is your leader in a late race. Caution, gonna get restart. Probably gonna have a green-white checkered finish here. But Cole Sampson is your leader. Let's take a look and see what happened to bring out the fourth caution of the afternoon. What happened uh, to trigger the big one here at the Trenton Fairgrounds Speedway?
So watching Brandon Yadell once again, three wide off the corner. Ryan Benjamin gets pinched by Yadell, and then 56 of Benjamin Dover is uh, what going to be the catalyst to turn the 97 completely around. And this is right in front of the pack. I'm going to see, uh, trying to focus here. There's Yadell, make contact with a 22 of uh, Josh Williamson. There's where Daisy Johnson Passenger side door into Matt Tuck. James Edwards is going to come in there as well. And then watch this. Uh, dri uh, driver's side door. Logan Williams right into the side of 97. Uh, up he goes. Derek Hamill with a close call there. Caleb Rose is going to hit him right there. He almost goes upside down himself. Zachary Davis involved as well. Across the start finish line. Goes a 97. He is still rolling. Hits the outside wall. Karangs back into the racing groove. Madison Tall, her his teammate right there, hits driver's side. Continues to uh, spin like a top on the front straightaway. That mortally damages Madison Tall. And back in here, there's where uh, Le uh, Logan Williams ended up on the pit lane. And then uh, Benjamin Dover is going to hit the 97 one final time. Right there in the back. And that's going to kill any chances he had at this championship with Weed Killer. And Yadell going to finally flip the car upside down. Oh, right side up, I should say. A little bit more contact with Josh Williamson. And the 97 is finally back on all four wheels. An absolute insane crash here at Trenton. As Dave Benjamin Jr., your Langhorn winner, gets involved just a little bit there at the end. But man, oh man, we're going to take a couple more looks at this and then get you to your restart here. To watch here, just more useless drivers running out of talent, and then it's just absolutely all on for there. At this point, I really that's an unbelievable ride by the 97. That's no question about that. Glad he's okay. Yeah, um, th thankfully, this is a video game, and then Benjamin Dover gonna give him one more last hit. We're gonna go on board with a couple of different drivers here. Just Absolutely insane wreck. That's going to be probably one of the nastiest wrecks of the season, in my personal opinion. On board with Logan Williams. He avoided the first accident, but he's not going to avoid this accident. You see, trying to get to the inside, then Yadil, nowhere for Logan Williams to go. And he's just going to pull into the 39th position pit stall, and just unfortunately, it's going to take on what another chase driver out. A lot of chase drivers were caught up in this. On board with Dano Georgi, first race in the Mission Mark Q Cup Series. That was a close call there for the brand new spec and new driver. And then you see all the calamity behind him. There's where well, Logan Williams hit Yadell. Look at that 97 car go. My goodness. Madison Tall's vantage point. This is going to effectively take her out of championship contention. She's trying to back it down, back it down, back it down. And then out of nowhere, her teammates are just going to come out. Uh, from the outside wall and then unfortunately it's going to take her out of contention. going to be doing two more onboards here and then we'll get you back to your restart. There's a watch on board here, Caleb Rose. Another big wreck here. And I don't know what to say. Obviously a lot of, uh, or this not not Brent. No, that is Caleb Rose, my bad. I don't really know what to say to that. I mean, at the end of the day, just bad calls by some drivers. It turned into a pretty big wreck there, and that's a tough one there at the end to the end of this race here today. One final on board with uh, the man who was the biggest part of this accident. Take it away, Matt Tuck. Well, here we are, that 97 car is going to go up and over, almost up and over there, and then it's just complete destruction here. And not sure exactly that was that's a pretty bad crash probably one of the bigger flips i've seen in nr without a doubt haven't seen anything like that in a while so that is a tough one there um that is a tough one not entirely sure what glad he's all right though glad he's able to get out of that all right once again thankfully this is a video game so uh Nobody can really get injured. Well, except Al Agassi, but you know what? That's uh, my driver, so you know what? I don't care what happens to him. But that changed the entire complexion of this race. Kayla, uh, Cole Sampson, I should say, 
uh, is going to be your leader after all is said and done. Going to have an extremely late race restart here. So let's get you back to your restart here. We're probably five laps to go at the Trenton Fairgrounds Speedway in the penultimate race of the inaugural season in the NOFSRL Mission Barbecue Cup Series. We're going to have exactly two laps to go when we cross the line for Cole Sampson. Take a look and see who was knocked out. Madison Tall, Matt Tuck, uh... Logan Williams, Benjamin Dover, uh, Brandon Adele, obviously, Caleb Rowe, yeah, Caleb Rose, 32 of James Edwards, for, uh, I believe, uh, yeah, ben, uh, Dave Benjamin Jr., Josh Williamson, Daisy Johnson, Juan Rodriguez, all involved in that, all knocked out, but two laps to go here from Trenton for Cole Sampson, and a look who's behind him, the lone Saturn in the field, Number 26 of Daniel Voiles. We still can't count out Colton Yo in that one car. Colton Yo's held on surprisingly well here today, but obviously two laps to go. We know Voiles can get things done here late in the going, but Cole Sampson, six turns to go here. We're going to see if he has enough to hold on here for the win. See if he does. Coming on to turn four for the final time. On the front straightaway for the second final time. And Dan DeVito Jr. going around. That's going to be the race. Cole Sampson is going to win the race back. And a huge stack up to end it. Mitchell Collins, Tristan Allen, Dano George I destroyed. And a huge melee to cap off the penultimate race. And that's going to do it. The man who benefits the most from that is Derek Hamill, without a doubt. Definitely is. See where uh, Hamill ended up. There he is, seeing where uh, he's currently in 11th. So, uh, actually, he's probably going to be inside the top 10 after this, but Cole Sampson, your Talladega winner, won that with the last lap pass. No last lap pass necessary here. Coming onto the front straightaway under caution in a, in a massive two laps to go melee. Cole Sampson, second one of the season. He does it at Trenton. We got, once again, we're probably going to have to review this several different times. That was probably, I'm not sure if that was bigger than the big one, but that was big. Derek Hamill, he ends up finishing P11. Oh, no. And uh, Jonathan Logan, he still gets fourth, but uh, Colton Yo is in third. That is going to make this championship battle going into New Jersey even spicier. But Cole Sampson in the five. First win, uh, second win of the season. Third win of the season for Appleseed Racing. And uh, there are your official standings. Cole Sampson is your winner. Daniel Voiles, Colton Yo, Jonathan Logan, Tyler Reynolds, Nathan Buchanan, Jake Hoover, Owen Miles, Zachary Fitzwater, and Brady Wilmington round out the top 10. Take a look and see everybody that was knocked out from this. We're going to take a couple of looks at the last lap melee. And then we'll get you to your outro here after a very chaotic race here at the, New Jer at the uh, Trenton Fairground Speedway. So once again, turn, coming off of turns three and four, Danny DeVito Jr. hits the outside wall into the 27 of Jake Hoover, and then Brady Wilmington going to have nowhere to go in the 62, and then once again, just a, another driver uh, turning around like a dreidel in front of the field. Dano George, I, oh, he was so indecisive there. Driver's side door almost flips the A-car upside down. That was a hard hit. Charlie Davenport involved as well. And you see Derek Hamill laughing his happy rear end past all of these guys to the caution flag. And then it is effectively a log jam. Uh, 38 of Trey Smith getting packed there by the 98 of Stapleton. And then you see, it, like I said, an absolute log jam. Riley Sampson in there. Landon Smith Jr. with damage. That's not going to help him going into New Jersey. And then all the cars in there. You'll probably spot uh, all your favorite drivers in there with their cars being absolutely destroyed late in the going. Trenton was not nice today. It was kind of nice to Derek Hamill. He's still going to have a somewhat decent shot of winning this championship, but uh, it's, it's going to make everything so chaotic going into New Jersey Motor Speedway on Saturday night. 
So watch DeVito there just get ping pong across the front straightaway. Ping pong again and more guys piling in. Lots of Arca breaks here today. Uh, definitely notice that. A lot of guys just refusing to use the actual brake pedal, using other cars as their brake, but that's a tough way to end the day. The DeVito's torn up in there. A lot of the apple seed cars. A couple, uh, that's not a full frontal car, never mind, but a lot of apple seed cars torn up in there. See uh, Josh Williamson's team in there. A lot of good cars torn up here to end the race. Definitely a shame here to end this race. Not the way you want to see any race end here. Definitely was not, but Cole Sampson, second win of the season. And uh, we already went over your top 10 results, but final thoughts on this wild penultimate race. We've only got one race left, uh, New Jersey. How do you think that's going to happen? In New Jersey's going to be... I don't know. New Jersey's going to be interesting. That is definitely... Uh... That's going to be a wild one. I've, I've, you know, I've tested New Jersey before. It's kind of an interesting mile and a half ish track. The speeds they can carry there too. It's a lot like uh, New Kentucky, where you have a lot of cornering speed. So, it should be uh, a fun race. Hopefully, you know, stays a little cleaner. I'm sure it'll stay cleaner than this, but it'll definitely be an exciting race. Obviously, even if the championship battle is, it's not over yet. Obviously, but definitely swings pretty well in Jonathan Logan's favor. Should definitely still be a solid race next Saturday or this Saturday night. Yeah, I believe it. Yes, this Saturday night. Uh, yes, this Saturday night is the Corporate Deployments 500 from the New Jersey Motor Speed. We're going to be doing 87 laps around that mile and a half to kick off what has just been an absolutely insane inaugural season for this Mission Barbecue Cup Series. And it will be the last race I will use these model of cars. Uh, the ICR mod will not be used for next season and beyond uh, for the Mission Barbecue Cup Series. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, the... Congratulations once again to Cole Sampson. Tune in Saturday night as we conclude, uh, as we conclude whatever this series has been. Honest, like this season has been. Like I said, this season, like I said, right in the beginning in the pre-race at Daytona, this season was gonna be incredibly stupid and unorganized right until the final lap in the New Jersey Motor Speedway, and right now it's really lived up to that uh, prediction. But Cole Sampson, your second winner of uh, your winner here of the uh, Star Ledger Patriot Day 500, his second win of the season, Appleseed Racing's third win of the season. Yes, that is Appleseed Racing's third win of the season. Here are your points after 39, uh, not 39, 34, I should say, of 35 races. And uh, on behalf of Matt Tuck, I have been Trey Wright. Thank you for tuning in to the Star Ledger Patriot Day 500. Then this has been NASCAR Nerd 34. Signing off.